with seven active regions on the Earth-facing disk and more about to rotate into view, a solar storm that's ongoing at Earth, and one more on the way, our sun is getting busy. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is picking up and it's on the lively side. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, you can see two bands of active regions, one in the north and one in the south, and that tells you solar cycle 25 is well underway. In fact, back on the 14th, whammo, did you see that? That was region 2925 and it launched a partially Earth-directed solar storm off to our west. Too bad, though, it was westward of this big coronal hole, which has also been sending us some fast solar wind, and that wind is likely deflected that solar storm off further to the west so that it's missed Earth entirely. But you know what? No matter. The fast wind from this coronal hole has actually bumped us up to storm levels. In fact, for a few hours, it bumped us up to G2 level solar storm conditions, and that gave us some beautiful aurora for a very short bit, even in some places down at mid-latitudes. Meanwhile, as it, these regions continue to rotate, you can look whammo on the 16th. We cut region 2929 firing off yet another solar storm that's partially earth directed this one however is on the east side of that coronal hole and likely that fast solar wind now could actually deflect this one into earth so we could be having a yet another solar storm that's earth directed but we're waiting for coronagraphs to give us a confirmation Meanwhile, on top of all of that, we actually have even more regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next couple days. We have region 2932, and that was firing off some big solar storms on the sun's far side. And we have another region that's just about to rotate into view, and even one more in the south. And those from Stereo's view are also solar storm producers. So we could have some real fun here over the next week, and including the boosting of that solar flux up into triple digits, amateur radio operators and emergency responders are also enjoying some good propagation. Switching to our M-Flare threat meter, as you can see, the X-ray flux back around the 10th or so was still a bit on the quiet side, but as we began to move into about the 12th and even the 13th, you can see that X-ray flux begin to rise and a bit of flare activity. Well, that solar flux also rose right on with it. We are now back into the triple digits for solar flux, and this means good propagation on Earth's day side for amateur radio operators and emergency responders, and yet it will be a bit noisy on on the bands because you, you can see we do have a bit of flare activity. On the 14th, we did have an M-class flare with a short radio blackout for a little bit. That was when we had that first of the two solar storms that I showed you being launched. Since then, though, it's only been C-class flares. However, we do still have about a 20% chance of M-flares, so this is going to last easily over the next few days, and we have more regions rotating into Earth view, so expect these conditions to continue easily over this next week. Switching to our solar storm conditions, as you can see, we were pretty quiet until about the 8th when we got hit by a pocket of fast solar wind that bumped us up to storm levels. So if you happen to be a, a, a person who is a fan of, let's say, Steve Hawking or, I don't know, Elvis or even David Bowie, the sun was celebrating their birthdays right along with you. Then, uh, sadly, it didn't last too long before things went kind of quiet again, but that only was until the 14th when we got hit by yet a larger pocket of fast solar wind and and wham, that bumped us up not only to storm levels, but up to G2 level storm conditions. And that brought us some gorgeous aurora for a short while down into mid-latitudes, but it really didn't last all that long. So if you've been an aurora chaser over the past couple days, as you can see, it's kind of been stumbling and bumbling along. It really hasn't been easy to catch that aurora. It's been pretty uh, sporadic. And these conditions will continue over the next day or so before things really begin to settle down. But then we do have that other solar storm that might glance uh, Earth right around the 20th or so. We'll have to kind of wait to see what the models show us, but that might bring us yet another chance for a little bit of an aurora show as the week continues. 
So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun just a little bit from the side. And as we take a look at Stereo A's view, especially if we focus on the east limb, you can see we've got a lot of new active regions that are pretty busy on the east limb. In fact, region 2932 that's just now rotated into Earth view, this region was a big solar storm producer on the sun's far side. Right now it looks though that it's kind of quieting down a little bit. We'll see if it picks up again. But the region just behind it in the north, that region also looks like it could be a solar storm producer. And yet we have another region uh, that's old region 2916 in the south, and that region also looks like it could be a solar storm producer. So you aurora photographers, if you haven't been able to get any aurora shots with this recent solar storm, don't worry. It looks like you're going to get more chances here either this week or possibly into next week. And amateur radio operators, well, Good news for you as well. The solar flux should stay in the triple digits easily over this next week and possibly over next week. And that means good radio propagation on Earth's day side. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the full moon with a full moon on the 17th. And even by the 23rd, the moon will still be about 75% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you've got this bright companion you're going to have to deal with. So be sure to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are in the middle of that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's rotated in through the Earth's strike zone, and we're going to be continuing to feel the effects of this over the next couple days. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting storm levels with up to about a 50% chance of a major storm, and that will calm down about midweek. Now, at mid-latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 15% chance of a minor storm and again, these conditions should settle down as we move through the week, but we do have that other solar storm that is partially Earth-directed, and we could get a little glancing blow from that, and that could bump us up to storm levels again, especially at high latitudes. But we're still waiting for those models. It's pretty early to make those predictions yet. So just expect that this, the quiet conditions as we move into the end of this upcoming week could possibly actually pop back up and give us more storming. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, believe it or not, with all these active regions on the Earth-facing disk, not everything is in the green. We actually do have some M-flare players on the Earth-facing disk. NOAA is giving us about a 20% chance of an M-class flare over the next couple days, with the main player being region 2929. We also have a little bit of M-flare risk from region 2930, but those two regions are going to be rotated off on the sun's west limb here in the next few days, so that M-flare risk may begin to, to quiet down just a bit. However, we do have those new regions rotating into Earth view over the next couple days, and once we get a better look at them, that might increase that M-flare risk again. So welcome to Solar Cycle 25. It looks like big flares are, might actually be here to stay, and the nice thing is that we're going to be getting that solar flux back up into the triple digits and keeping it there possibly for the duration. Wouldn't it be nice if we don't drop back down to double digits? This means we will be having decent radio propagation on Earth's day side, despite the fact that we have a risk for radio blackouts. Now, GPS users, I know you're not really happy about the increased flux and the, uh, the risk for radio blackouts, so just stay vigilant, especially near dawn and near dusk. So the space weather this week is definitely on the lively side. We do have a coronal hole that's rotating through the Earth strike zone now, and it's been sending us some fast solar wind, and that has bumped us to storm levels multiple times, and it could easily do so again over the next 24 to 48 hours. So Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could easily get some more shows. Now, if you're at mid latitudes, your Aurora photographers, well, it may be a bit of a, a sporadic or a fleeting show, so only if you're dedicated should you chase. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, 
Well, you know, we've got triple digits back when it comes to that solar flux, and it looks like it's going to continue to stay that way easily over this week and next week with, with the new regions that are rotating into Earth view. So radio propagation on Earth's day side should continue to stay in the good range. And as long as you can get through the, the issues with that solar storm that has been, you know, causing some havoc on the night side, well, just hang in there. Things will get better. Now, you GPS users, well, you know, I'm sure you don't like the fact that the solar flux is actually back in the triple digits. That does cause GPS reception down at low latitudes to be a bit dicey. And I'm sure you don't really like the fact that we've got a few M-flare players on the Earth-facing disk as well. So that means radio blackouts may be something you have to deal with. So as long as you stay away from the Dawn Dust Terminators and away from Aurora while this solar storm is raging, your GPS reception should be pretty decent. But also remember, stay away from those low latitude regions if you can, especially near dawn and near dusk. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.